The topic is AMRs, Autonomous Mobile Robots, and my guest is Ash Sharma, Senior Research Director for Interact Analysis. Ash, welcome. Hi there, Bob. Thanks very much for having me. Ash, how should we be thinking about autonomous mobile robots today? What they look like, what they do, where they operate? So there's a number of applications where they are relevant for right now. The most common, I would say, is for material handling, uh, so for, for, for moving stock around in uh, manufacturing facilities and also in uh, e-commerce environments is, is the most common, but they're also being used elsewhere, like mm -hmm. healthcare environments as well. We hear a lot of them, and mostly I've, my experience of hearing about them is in manufacturing plants and warehouses, but you're saying they right. go beyond those environments as well? Well they, well, they do, yeah. They've been used for a long time in, in places like hospitals, uh, and there's also a, a wide range of new robots that are coming onto the, onto the market for, um, for disinfecting facilities against uh, you know, coronavirus, et cetera, using UV, mm -hmm. UV uh, light and so on. So they're so being, brought in, being brought into service for a whole new application that they might exactly, not have anticipated yeah. six months ago. Exactly. So uh, how have they come along technologically? Are they much more sophisticated than, say, five years ago, or are they pretty much the same type of uh, units? Or what, What's kind of the state of the art of the AMRs today? Well, you've seen a lot of advancement in terms of the navigation technology. Um, many of them rely on, on, on LiDAR sensors and Mm -hmm. with uh, with the progression of autonomous vehicles um, with companies like Tesla and so on, the work they've done on, on improving um, LiDAR technology. LiDAR using and, laser technology. Correct? Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. It just allows them to be much more intelligent in terms of obstacle avoidance and figuring out where they are in a facility. Yeah. Um, you, so that's one thing. And the other thing is the, the vast number of AMRs that are, uh, installed now is giving the manufacturers a lot of data on how they're being used and how to optimize them. So much of the advancements are actually coming from the software optimization of the of the robot. It's interesting. You said obstacle avoidance, and of course, the big obstacle we want most to avoid is people. So I take it uh, we are at a stage where AMRs can comfortably operate in an environment of humans as well, and not have a lot of collisions and, and accidents and the like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 they rely on a number of sensors. So it could be uh, laser scanners, LIDAR, camera, uh, et cetera. So the, traditionally, the, the AMRs come with a vast number of sensors now to avoid any kind of incidents. And it is incredibly rare to hear of any incident with, with mm -hmm. an AMR um, you know, injuring anybody compared to a manual uh, vehicle is, is not the same. The, the safety record is not particularly good if you look at things like manual fork trucks and so on. Well, they sound like pretty sophisticated machines, and I would imagine that they're not cheap. So what is the economic justification for AMRs today? Are they expensive? Is it difficult sometimes to justify the ROI, or do they return rather quickly because of the labor they save? Sure. I mean, when you look at the price tag, yeah, they, they are rather expensive. Uh, you're talking a couple hundred thousand dollars for a, for a big fork truck, um, but perhaps less for, for something smaller. Uh, but what you've got to remember is you are reducing the, your labor, um, labor costs because you're not having to have a manual worker. Um, and you're also having other cost savings because there's, well, there has been historically a labor shortage and high turnover of, of people working in those kinds of environments. And so the ROI that's achievable, you know, it's, it's well less than, than two years on, on most pieces of hardware. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be less than 12 months. So the ROI is, is certainly, certainly there already. As you point out, one of the big justifications in recent years has been an attempt to address the human labor shortage. Of course, we don't have that now. We have rampant unemployment. But does that lessen the appeal of these machines, or are we looking more down the line to a, to a stage when unemployment might have once again return to historical levels and they become more yeah. justifiable? Sure. I mean... The unemployment levels have risen in pretty much every country imaginable, and uh, that is uh, could potentially reduce labour costs. 
and make much more labour available, which means less need for automation in the short term. But long term, most major manufacturers and uh, uh, retailers have already started on their automation journey. And it's not just about reducing cost. Um, it's about productivity and moving their staff into more challenging and rewarding roles because even though there are a lot of people out there they might not want to be you know picking boxes and moving fork trucks around mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a short-term blip i would say the the unemployment levels when i think of an amr i think of a machine that's kind of dumb. I mean, it's designed to perform a particular discrete task over and over and over again. Are they becoming quote unquote smarter? Is artificial intelligence becoming a factor in these things? Or is the very nature of AMRs just that they do a specific task, repetitive task, and they don't need to be smart? Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that, that's the situation you've got where the beauty of, of these robotic products are that they can do simple tasks, repetitive tasks that people don't want to do over and over again. They don't get tired. They work 24 seven is one part of it. So yes, they do that very, very well and very effectively. Mm -hmm. The other side of things is that in within warehouses and within manufacturing facilities, the software that is deployed alongside the robot can actually optimize the entire, um, performance within that building so it can be responsible for managing inventory so uh, if you think about um, the, a goods to person AMR what what they can do is to optimize the inventory within a within a fulfillment center and help deal for deal with seasonality and which products are going to be selling which ones aren't and actually put the inventory where it's best suited using mm -hmm. the AMR so uh, it's not just about simple point-to-point -point moves. There, there is some com complex situations that, that are arising. Yeah. How fast is the technology advancing? Because just tech in general is just tends to go by leaps and bounds. So if, if I was a company that spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on an AMR, should I be afraid that within a year or two it's going to be obsolete? There'll be a new generation along and I shouldn't have, not, shouldn't have done that? Or can they be updated or is this not an issue? Yeah, I mean, the... The hardware is advancing slowly, as I said, things like the LiDAR sensors and so on. But again, going back to the software, that's where most of the optimization is done. And none of these products work without a software platform. And that's mm -hmm. where a lot of the uh, upgrades happen. So it's kind of like having your iPhone where you're, uh, it will be updated through, through the operating system every six months or 12 months and new features will be added. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, maybe three or four years, you then upgrade your, 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 your actual handset. So it's a similar sort of situation, perhaps not quite as, as, as rapid as that sort of turnover in, in, in terms of the hardware. Yeah, it, it sounds similar to Tesla drivers who buy the car, but then have software updates just sent to them automatically. They don't right. have to do anything. And I'm guessing that an AMR operator or an operation that uses AMRs would also not have have to do very little in order for that update to be installed, right? Well, yeah, it, it obviously it depends on the vendor, but a lot of the updates are over the air. So they're all, they're mm -hmm. all Wi-Fi networks or using something like 5G uh, to communicate. So yeah, the so software updates are done. Uh, yeah. The other, you know, the twin, the twin trends of any major technology is one, they become more sophisticated and two, they become cheaper <laughs> over time. Might we see the latter happen with AMRs? Might they become more affordable as they mature? Yeah, it's almost, uh, it's almost inevitable that prices will come down. Um, we're seeing volumes rise very quickly. So tens of thousands of AMRs being, being deployed worldwide. So as we start seeing the, that volume uh, happening, it will naturally lead to, to pricing, pricing reduction. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that is already happening. So, um, uh, absolutely. So, are you pretty bullish on the future of investments in AMR? Do you think it'll continue to kind of rocket upwards or will it level off at some point? What's your feeling about the future of investments in this technology? I mean, we're, we're living in very uncertain times right now and very uh, unusual times. But when you look at the the underlying macro drivers of the market, which are things like 
um, an aging population, a massive surge in e-commerce, um, people wanting to move away from manual hard labor jobs, then those drivers are still there and actually getting stronger, if anything. So mm -hmm. we're very bullish on the outlook for, for the AMR. And what is the future of people? We're constantly being reassured that while it is undoubtedly the case that AMRs are replacing some human labor, they're not replacing all. We have the concept of cobots, collaborative robots, humans working side by side with AMRs. As you look into the more distant future, do you see that trend continuing or do you see a progressive reduction in the percentage of human workers required in the workplace because of this technology? Yeah, I mean, if you look at how automation has entered um, the supply chain, uh, manufacturers have started off by automating parts of the production line to the automotive uh, OEMs did. And what they've done over time is try to automate more and more of, of, their, of their supply chain. And they take the low hanging fruit first and then they go with the next process and the next process and so on. So I think it's a, it's an ongoing evolution where more manual tasks will be will be replaced by automation. And, and I would say that the level of human interaction will will reduce naturally. Ash Sharma of Interact Analysis, thank you so much for joining us today to kind of paint a picture for us of where we are with AMRs, autonomous mobile robots in the workplace. Thank you very much for being with us. Sure, absolutely. Great to speak to you, Bob.